Hey, vegan cyclists. So we're gonna talk about how I got dropped at Sea Otter. And before I get into it, kinda just wanna show you this crazy graphic of, uh, this is every time up the hill. So it's about two and a half minutes or so. Every time we hit the hill, um, I did it eight times. I think six, seven of the times was with the group. Um, and then I got dropped, but you can see just the intervals. <laughs> intervals, man. The top is the total time and averages. You can see right off the bat, dude, starting at 800 wattos. So man, here's the thing. Probably the main reason I got dropped was because I didn't really know how this course raced. I've never raced on this course in any caliber, right? Let alone this super high caliber. And that's important, man. It's really important to know how a course develops through a race, where the points are, uh, that people attack, where, you know, the places are that you can rest, where, you know, just all the data about the the the, uh, the course. Now, I honestly probably had my best legs that I've had. I was, uh, at one point, was on track to doing my best hour power and was feeling fine. It just honestly was a few tactical mistakes on my end that, um, that wasted energy at key points. You know, so I probably would say I dropped myself because of certain things that I did, but I was just really eager to do well in this race. I felt great and and just had no clue um, how the race was gonna develop. So right off the bat, man, like 197 beats per minute and just an average of 400 and some odd watts. It was insane. Uh, it was absolutely insane from the gun, just, just crazy. Now there was a ton of really strong guys here um, and, and big teams. So, you know, the wind right now is coming from the left. And so everyone is like trying to get sheltered. It, so it was like a really crazy crosswind, super, super high crosswind. Everyone's trying to get far to the right. And so, you, you know, you kind of had this battle. Now on the descent, this is the first time doing this descent at race pace and the crosswind coming from the left was, it was just really nerve wracking. Um, so even though I'm doing zero watts, I'm just threshold mentally, um, you know, because the crosswind is just buffering so hard. And so I'm not really staying on anyone's wheel. I was just kind of just really afraid of the whole thing. It took me a minute to get used to it. You can see right here, the gaps already opening up on lap one and how strung out it is. I was probably, mid pack three quarters pack in the back so there's still a lot of guys behind me um and so i mean that descent isn't a descent where you can just kind of recover because you're it's like super technical and this is another part of the course that i don't know why i was just man i was just not uh there mentally and so constantly having to uh, surge to get back on and burn those little matches second time up the climb um, you know, the thing is that the group's so big at this point that you can kind of swing around and get into a good spot and fall back a little bit. You can see here, everyone just so strung out. And again, on this descent, it, it just took me five or six times down this thing just to sort of go balls into the wind. You can see me burning a match just to get back on. You know, the first three laps of this thing, I was just absolutely out of my mind. Then right here, everyone, because of the wind coming from the right side, everyone just slamming against this wall, you know? And so there's, there was no time to recover. There wasn't ever a time to take a breath and sort of get your composure. Um, and I was, I don't know, I was just sort of frazzled by the whole thing. Again, out of that same freaking turn, just maxing out my watts to, get back on the uh, the guy's wheels but the thing is like okay so wind blows you all around and it really makes it that you have to go watt for watt with people even if you're on their wheel so um here comes i think the third or fourth time up the climb and man this thing was steep and so i use my positioning to trade for wattage right i fall to the back i let everyone kind of go in front of me and I lose all position, which was a bummer, um, but I needed to because I was blown up on that freaking climb. It's just so difficult. So then you come over the, the top of this thing and I just, again, if I know, now that I know how this course is, now I know how this descent is, I'll do way better next time. Um, but just trying to stay is, I'm just not in anyone's draft, right? Just 
tactically riding like an idiot. And then here the group splits and there's a bunch of guys in this group that aren't gonna chase and so I'm so frustrated because I, I feel good, right? I'm not, I don't know, I feel good. And this is where I pretty much wreck my race because I try to bridge up to that, uh, to that group way up there. Now, uh, Team Illuminate, this guy, he's got guys on the front that split the field, so he's not gonna chase, and I'm so bummed that, um, that that went away, so I'm trying to make the bridge, just not realizing how this course races. You know what I mean? Because those two groups ended up like sort of coming back together. I mean, it's just, I felt like that front group was just gonna go away, and the back group was just gonna noodle around. It's not how it happened at all, but that's sort of just my, my thought and what I thought was going to happen. So I redline myself uh, and then we're on this climb and this Mike Spikes guy just is putting in a killer effort. Now we're, we've got probably 20 guys behind us. It's like, what am I doing? Why am I on the front of this group right now? I mean, I know I'm trying to bridge up to the other, the other group uh, and that's really what I want to do, but I shouldn't be doing this. Um, so the front group's right there. I'm trying to make it to them, but now guys are a little bit fresher. I'm just fully in the wind, and everyone is coming from behind and jumping that gap. And this is pretty much where I, I drop myself, right? Where I make sure that I'm not gonna be a contender in this race. Because I try, I tried to make that, that effort and uh, completely disintegrate, you know? Um, I don't know why I was trying to be so proactive just didn't really realize how hard this race was going to be, how hard that climb was going to be. So I, I should have just been hanging out, just didn't realize. And um, so now I give up my position because I was on the front of this group uh, to try to recover a little bit. And um, it's just, you can see this guy in front of me blowing up. Man, it was hard. And so then I almost get uh, flicked right there, you know what I mean? What I do end up, this is this is pretty much where I'm getting dropped, is I'm just not able to get down this hill very good, uh, you know? And um, the guys on the front, dude, they just never swell up, right? So in a lot of races that I've done at the bottom of a descent, guys will sort of like mushroom up and then you can get back on, but this is just not the case. It was just full gas, full pin the entire time, right? And so we come around here and uh, you can see they're just single file, man. <sighs> and I've already, I mean, I've burned so many matches. I tried to bridge to the front group and then this, the, the, the chase group blew past me. Just bad tactics all around. Um, I'm so badly wanting to get back onto that group that I follow this Illuminate guy's wheel and burn the last match that I have uh, to do it. I mean, I do get back on, uh, but dude, at what cost, right? I I should have played this way smarter, and next time I will, obviously. But this is how I got dropped, right? This is this, what this video is about, is, is what took place. So it wasn't necessarily just I'm hanging on and, and just getting out fitness. I made some real tactical errors on the descent, not being anywhere near anyone's wheel, making stupid moves uh, to try to close down gaps that really didn't even have any sort of bearing on anything, and just not knowing the course, not knowing how steep this was, uh, how steep this climb was, and, and utilizing the wind, you know? So this is the last time up the climb for me. Uh, with a group, my RPMs, you can see they're just plummeting. And that pretty much means I'm done, right? My I just can't sustain an anaerobic level anymore for this, uh, at this level, right? Like that intensity. And uh, yeah, man, get wasted. So now I get uh, down and me and the other, there's me and one other guy and we start to just kind of go like threshold tempo because we want to finish the race. A lot of guys got flicked. So it'd be cool to, you know, I don't know, get 40th or just keep, I mean, it's an awesome opportunity to be on this sweet race course. So me and this dude are kind of just motoring around 
and uh, I mean we're going we're going good right and this is where I know that I had good legs because even after the crazy intensity I recovered really fast and was uh, was putting down some you know decent power from what I had been doing um, and what's a bummer is that the front group or the the chase group that we were in they they must have taken this lap super easy and that's the thing man a lot of times in races it's like if you think it's too hard like it will slow down right usually it will slow down and this that their slowdown was when i wasn't on the group you can see them right there so we're so close to them and i feel like dude we are gonna make it we we can jump on we can get onto their wheel and then they'll just uh everything will slow down i'll recover everything will be cool because the front group the front of the race is gone you know what I mean? So at least maybe I can finish the race with these guys. That would be awesome. And so I'm honestly telling myself right now, full gas, full gas, go, all you got, all you got, all you got. And this was everything I had. You know what I mean? After eight times hitting 600, 500 to 600 watts up this freaking climb, it was everything I had. Uh, I got around that dude and they're so close but as soon as they hit that that uh, corkscrew they are gone and uh, and so yeah man that was it this that was it I couldn't I, I never saw them again their next lap was pretty pretty fast this dude super bummed flips him off <laughs> you know and uh, he eventually drops off and just calls it a day because why is he even out here right i wanted to keep racing so then we did one more lap me and this guy are kind of motoring around together and uh i feel like dude we could still finish the race but then i get this safety pin in the wheel which was cool because i didn't want to, i didn't really want to race anymore so there it is guys thanks so much for watching vegan cyclist yeah